Whether it's ancient combat or modern sport, winning is what it's all about. I have to conquer a skill that I know absolutely nothing about. But how do you win? The history channel car is history. This man has learned the hard way. Now he's ready to show you. How to win as a combat archer. When the ability to shoot fast and accurately makes the difference between life and death. Victory and defeat. And what was it like to be shot at? Ah! When nothing could fly farther and faster than a metal piercing arrow. Ah! And you're weighed down by 60 pounds of armor. Which side would you rather be on? The answer might surprise you. So steady your nerves, take careful aim, and learn how to win with the bow and arrow. Right, you all know what this is? The bow, the stick and the string. Now this is a great idea. Our ancestors invented and improved it over thousands of years. Now we are going to teach you how to win... How to win... As combat archers. We're going to see how long it takes, how good you can get, and then we're going to pitch you against a full-scale assault by knights in plate armour. <laughs> Seems simple enough. But first, we want you to uh, follow your ancestors and make one bow and one arrow. And we have modern tools, we have flint for the arrowheads, we have string. We also have woods all around us, so go out, get yourself one bow and one arrow. Off you go. <laughs> go that way, guys. Go that way. Ah. The bow and arrow. So important in human evolution, it's been called the third invention, after fire and tools. When eating depended on hunting, it was vital for prehistoric man's survival. He needed a weapon that had range, accuracy, that could be prepared quietly, that built up its own energy, which could be released instantly. The bow became the most important and highly regarded weapon in the arsenal of early man. But just try making one of these things from scratch. Not easy, as our team members are finding out. For instance, nobody's told them what kind of trees to cut. You or ash are the best. They're not the most common of trees, but they've been the first choice of archers for thousands of years. And most of our people have gotten it wrong. Though I have heard the words, you ash, a couple of times. All right, guys, just uh, sit around and start working on them. I want to see perfect bows and perfect arrows within just a few minutes. All right, we're hacking away at our ill-chosen wood. We're braiding up our lengths of string, and while all that's happening, let's think about some napping. That's napping with a K, not an N, and it's all about flint, made into arrowheads. All right, gentlemen, this is an arrowhead. Well, actually, it's about a thousand arrowheads. Have you ever done flint napping before? No. All right, put some goggles on. Now, flint napping is actually relatively easy to get it pretty good, but very, very difficult to get it absolutely right. Modern man is a clumsy oaf compared to his Stone Age ancestors. Their flint arrowheads were practically works of art. Later, when arrowheads were made of bronze and iron, a huge variety of shapes evolved. There were harpoon points for fish, blunt heads to stun small animals, and barbed heads to wound larger game and cause bleeding. But all of these would have failed completely if there were no fletchings at the other end of the arrow. Fletchings are feathers, leaves or whatnot at the arrow's tail. And eventually, arrow makers came to be called Fletchers. Think of that next time you turn to the Fs in your phone book. Ah, oh, Mr. Fletcher, I'd like to order... All we need now is a knock. That's without the K this time. It's what we use to marry the arrow to the bow. And with that, we're ready to go. All right, guys, this way. Come with your bows and your arrows. Right, you want to make a line back here? Let's try uh, yours. 
Let's try that one more time. Try that one more time. Ah! Try that one more time. Ooh. Not bad. Okay, yeah. let's try the next one. You've got this really heavy arrow with a yeah, and sharp... Yeah, if I run into a moose, this will probably do it. <laughs> you don't think yours is going to work? Oh, and I'll tell you why. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is the ninja bow. I see you've actually got some fletchings on there. And it's a really long arrow too with a pretty fearsome flint head on there. I figured if it, the, the bow thing doesn't work out, I can hit it with the arrow. So you see what a difference just those little fletchings make. Well, we've uh, made all sorts of bows, some short, some long, some which broke immediately. Arrows of all types, only one with fletchings, and that one was definitely the best. So at least it's given us some appreciation of our ancestors. Fortunately, we won't have to meet our men in armor with the crude bows of prehistory. Next for the conquest team, winning with advanced technology, Middle Ages style. Left to their own devices, the team's success in making their own bows and arrows was limited, to be polite. Yes. Now we're going to give them some training. Come on, this way. And teach them how to win with the genuine articles. All right, guys, these are the real things. Longbows. This is what you've labored so hard to try and make. You need certain equipment with bows, and that equipment has stayed the same throughout history. First of all, as you pull the string, you're always going to need something here to protect your fingers. It's called a finger tab. It's a simple piece of leather. As we fire a bow, the string hits the inside of the arm. And after a couple of goes of that, it makes a real mark there and hurts. So you need a bracer. These were just pieces of leather or slate tied around the arm. So the bowstring would slap against them. Bracers, tabs, good bow, and you're all set up. Right, we've got our equipment in hand. Bows, arrows, braces, finger tabs. 